and uh, have some pretty good guys in it. Guys like Floyd Mayweather, Roberto Garcia. Uh, you talk about Young Su Choi, Jesus uh, Chavez. You've got uh, Goyo Vargas is in here. John Brown is in this division. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, you've got a lot of exciting guys like Diego Corrales, who is undefeated as well. When you look at Corrales' record, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Garcia is probably the more famous of the two, but Corrales here uh, decked out in his fatigues from Sacramento, California. Pretty fair country record, too. He's undefeated with 23 er, KOs in his 28 wins. And Chico Corrales comes with a couple of things that could help him in this fight. He's a lot taller, has a big reach advantage over Garcia. What they'd like to see from him, he and his handlers, is a boxer-puncher kind of performance. They don't want him just running around the ring, uh, jabbing, but they also don't want him staying on the inside with Roberto Garcia, who has twice gotten off the canvas to retain his title. I'll take a look at the tail of the tape here, Al, and it'll tell us a few things that uh, Garcia's a whole lot shorter, he's a half pound lighter, he's a couple of years older, and he's giving away a couple of inches in reach. So everything on the tail of the tape would favor Diego Corrales. Uh, both undefeated fighters. It's Roberto Garcia's title that's up for uh, grabs tonight. This is his third title defense. He's the IBF junior lightweight champion of the world, but he's fought 10 of the 15 top opponents. There's the rules, Al. Well, you see the 10-point must in effect. These are the unified rules. No standing eight, no three knockdown. Uh, the referee can stop the fight and uh, can't be saved by the bell in any round. They've got one common opponent. He's Angel Aldama. Now, uh, Garcia uh, TKO'd uh, Aldama in five rounds. And the last time out, Corrales stopped Aldama in four. But uh, he also had to go ten rounds to beat him the first time. So uh, I don't know if that tells you a whole lot there. The common opponents, that, you know, the night and all that. I don't pay much attention to that, but they're very similar record-wise. Well, they're both big punchers. Garcia's land is knockout ratio 75%. Corrales is 82%. So they can both punch. By the way, uh, Garcia won the title in March of uh, 98. He won the title in Miami, Florida over Harold Warren. They won a full 12 rounds. This fight could go 12 rounds, so we'll tell you who the judges are. Uh, it could become very important. Bill Graham, Mike Agliena, and uh, Steve Weisfield of New Jersey. Agliena, of course, is from uh, Illinois, and Graham from Las Vegas, Nevada. Jimmy Lennon Jr. is moving into position, and we'll have this fight underway momentarily. Don't forget, coming up, and I know you don't have to forget, because uh, coming up is the a 10-round heavyweight battle, Mike Tyson against Orlan Norris. Want to welcome Argentina, Aruba, Australia, the Bahamas, Belgium, Bolivia, Brazil, Cambodia, Royal Armed Forces. Great to have you with us in Canada, in Chile, on Sky Channel. Want to say hello to Douglas American Day watching down there. All my friends in Shanghai TV in China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Curacao, the Dominican Republic. Hello again, everybody. Ecuador, El Salvador, France, Germany, Greece, Guatemala, Holland, and here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. from Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the City of Entertainment, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. As we have a big night of action in store for you, and it's all brought to you by America Presents in association with Showtime Championship Boxing and the MGM Grand. At this time, we present a world championship bout. It is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation President Robert Lee Sr. Supervisor at ringside is Al Lucas, along with the Nevada State State Athletic Commission, the chairman is Dr. Elias Ghana. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Chicago, Illinois, Mike Gliena. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Bill Graham. And from Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Introducing to you the third man in the ring, our referee in charge. Working in this is 123rd world title bout, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first on my right, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing camouflage trunks, fighting out of and representing Sacramento, California. He weighed in at 129 and one half pounds, undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 28 wins, no losses, 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Presenting the number one ranked IBF junior lightweight contender, introducing the undefeated Diego Chico Corrales. And his 
his opponent across the ring on my left, presenting the defending champion, fighting out of the red corner, wearing burgundy trunks, fighting out of La Colonia Boxing Club in Oxnard, California. He weighed in at a ready 129 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign as well with 32 wins, no losses, 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making the third defense of his title. Here is the defending and undefeated IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, introducing Roberto Grandpa Garcia. Once again, a referee in charge, Joe Cortez, now to give instructions. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules of the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. I want good sportsmen like conduct, understood? Okay, now these trucks here, they're a, li they're a little high. A little high here, okay? Touch them up, remember guys, I'm fair but I'm firm. Give me a clean fight. All right, we're set to go. Bob Sheridan, Al Bernstein, we're ringside, the MGM Grand Garden Arena. This is for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Roberto Garcia, Dick out in Burgundy. Diego Corrales, third man in the ring, one of the very best referees in the world. Joe Cortez doing his 123rd world title fight. So he is fair, and he will be firm, and he's a great referee. So these guys have a good shot to be the, really handle their own destiny, eh? All right, here we go, round number one. Again, scheduled for 12 rounds. Shorter of the two fighters is Roberto Garcia. Corrales, big, tall, lanky guy in the Chico written across his midsection there in the camouflage trunks. He's from Sacramento, California. Big six-footer against a five-foot-seven-inch uh, Roberto Garcia. Nice left hook by Garcia. Both these guys can bang. As I take a look at the ring records, there have been three long fights for Diego Corrales. They've been uh, uh, 10 rounds, 11 rounds, and 12 rounds, one time each. He's had 24 fights that have ended inside of seven rounds and 13 that have ended inside of three rounds. On the other hand, Roberto Garcia uh, has been 12 rounds five times in his career. People ask me uh, heading into this fight, how, what will what, happen in this fight? You get two big bangers, anything can happen. But Al, uh, these guys look like the type of guys that are really box each other. Well, I think Corrales would like it to be a little bit more of a boxing match, but he wants to punch with Garcia. There's the left hook of Garcia. He's got a very good double left hook. He'll want to get inside the jab of Corrales where he can work the, to the body and the head. But there's the danger. You see Corrales, when you come in, he, he's a very good counterpuncher. Well, he can kind of punch all right. Uh, Garcia has defended his title a couple of times against Ramon Lenon in Atlantic City, New Jersey. He retained the IBF, uh, IBF Junior Lightweight title. And then in 1999, he did it again against uh, John John Molina in Las Vegas, retaining the title. He went five rounds against Lenon and 12 rounds against Molina, a much better class fighter fighting for the title that time. Garcia's got his work cut out against this big, strong guy who showed a bit of trunk movement there, Diego Corrales. Corrales has 23 KOs in his undefeated record. Garcia has more. He has 32 wins and 24 KOs. In both of his title defenses, Garcia went down, so he can be put down. And uh, Corrales is certainly hoping for that. But one bad thing for Corrales early in this no, 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 first right, right, round, and good for Garcia. Garcia's already getting punches into the head from long range against Corrales, and that's not supposed to happen with a guy that's five inches shorter. But the reason is Corrales is leaning in more than he should. He's leaning in, and he's also not double jabbing. So what he does is he comes up with a left jab, and what he does is he leaves Roberto Garcia a chance to time his shot right back at him with a counter punch. And he comes in, oh, nice, nice left hook that time, cut uh, right side of the head of Garcia. Hold ahead, hold ahead. Look at this guy, he's a tough rookie, isn't he, Garcia? Man. Roberto Garcia has improved immeasurably in the last couple of years. Well, he's got uh, his uh, brother, Danny Garcia, who was a pretty good fighter himself, working with him, and his dad, Eduardo Garcia, and then uh, one of the best cut men in the business, a veteran, Chuck Bodak, and Ruben Juarez all in there with him. So he's got a nice, uh, good corner with him, as does uh, Corrales. Closing seconds now. This is the first round of a scheduled 10-round world title fight. Oh, all right, the bell ends round one round from both fighters. That one, uh, to me, nobody really took command of the first round, although I thought Garcia might have landed more clean punches. I think he probably did land more of the clean power shots, and he was able to uh, 
cut the distance down between himself and Corrales. So stylistically, I think uh, Roberto Garcia has to be feeling pretty good after that first round. And Corrales is cornered. I'm sure they're saying to him, you got to keep that distance. Look at this. Look at this, Al, as we listen. He's not even breathing her. That's conditioning. His father Eduardo is talking to him as his main second. Very cool corner, isn't it? Andale goes, means let's go, let's go in Spanish. And let's see if he picks up the pace any here in the second round. Bob Sherwood and Al Bernstein with the Grand Garden Arena here at the MGM. What a beautiful setup this is for watching boxing. And it's jam packed to see Mike Tyson in the next fight. But this is for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship in the world. And there's an anticipation of the crowd, Al, anytime that you're at a Tyson fight. Well, it's a different experience. Oh, nice right hand and a left hook oh, yeah. by Garcia. He's a very aggressive fighter. He rips both the body and the head. He wants to bang, and that's what he's doing against Corrales, who needs to get off those ropes. Well, Corrales does get off the ropes. Now the left hand gets through, bounces up the right side of the head, up at his toes. He digs downstairs. Just a little light blow there. Up at his toes down is Corrales. He's standing right in front of him. That's a good target for him. He comes with the uppercut, bangs the head back, looking to throw the right hand. Instead, Corrales trying to counter with his own. Look at this, a big uh, mouse underneath the uh, right eye of Corrales already. That left hook did some damage out. Diego Corrales is fighting the wrong strategic fight, and it's not the one they wanted him to fight. Perhaps some, some nerve. It's the biggest fight, obviously, of his pro career. Garcia, in his fourth title fight, he won the title and defended twice. You know, Jody Heaps just uh, pointed out to me, one of our stat guys, that, uh, you know, this guy's standing right in front, Corrales standing right in front. He wanted to get angles, Al, but he's not executing. You said the same thing. He's not doing a fighting the Bronx. Nice right hand inside by Garcia. Garcia hit him so hard, he almost dropped himself. Well, Garcia walked into a right hand there, and uh, Corrales countering him, which he certainly wants to do. Clips him behind the ear, takes a counter right hand again. Look at the determination in the eyes of Roberto Garcia, 24 years old against a 22-year-old. And he's on the assault now, digs to the body, throws one upstairs, working the uppercut. Answers with the left hand does Corrales. Corrales doesn't grab, he just lets him fire. Nice right uppercut by uh, Diego Corrales that time. He caught him pretty good, didn't hurt him any, didn't buckle the legs. Both of these guys are throwing some of the punches are landing. The uppercut, a big weapon for Corrales, and he's starting to remember it. That's something they worked on him doing in this bout. And there he uses the left uppercut. It's turning into an excellent match, which we thought it might be. Well, when you have a guy 32 and 0 that's fought world class fighters and a world champion fighting a guy that's 28 and 0 that has fought uh, some pretty good fighters, especially Claudio Martinet on his record there that he uh, went uh, five rounds and uh, TKO'd Martinet. Martinet's a kid that fought for the title a couple times, including a real rough fight against Boom Boom Johnson. He's a softball and a tough guy to beat. Corrales is starting to settle down here and starting to pick his shots much better at landing uppercuts, left hooks, and straight right hands. He's had a better second half of the second round. Oh, a nice right hand that creases the jaw of uh, Corrales. Garcia caught him good, but doesn't shift him with that right hand. Great match. Closing seconds now. This is the second round. This is picking up. You like boxing, you gotta like this one. The bell ends round two. Scorecard, Al. I thought Garcia eked out the first round, and I still think he landed more power blows, although Corrales did do some nice countering in the second round. I'm giving Garcia the first two rounds. Well, you can make a case for that. The first part of the second round was very, very effective uh, for Garcia. And let's listen in to Corrales. You say yes, but you don't do it. That's Miguel Diaz speaking. Okay. You say yes, but then you don't do it there. Here's where, in the last round, the left hook gets in from Roberto Garcia. That's his big money punch, both to the body and the head. And uh, he was able to get Corrales with that punch. Are you surprised that he didn't Second shift up. him with this punch? Second well, you know, he didn't land that one as flush as he would like. Now, here's Corrales throwing, most importantly, the uppercut during the course of this. He landed a couple hooks with the uppercut, which could be a very important weapon for him as this fight goes on. All right, here we go, round number three. 
Bob Sheridan with Al Bernstein with the MGM Grand Garden Arena watching Roberto Garcia in the burgundy and white and his opponent Diego Corrales in the camouflage trunks. This is round three of a scheduled 12 round IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Junior Lightweight Division we talked about a couple of times. It's a pretty good one as you take a look at the different fighters in there. Floyd Mayweather, the WBC champ, probably the most famous of them all in this other 30 pound division. Look at this work, Al. Garcia ripping Corrales on the ropes. Diego Corrales not wanting to be on those ropes, but is there. And when you're on the ropes against Garcia, expect him to just keep cranking left hooks until he hurts you or puts you down. A little tentative with that shot, the uppercut that time attempted by Corrales. And you would be uh, kind of blurry out if you've been taking shots like, uh, look at this. Oh, Garcia stays inside the power. He wants to fight right in his chest and wing to the body and come upstairs when he can. He'll throw the left hook, as you've seen on a couple of occasions. He spun the head but didn't really shift Corrales. Corrales wants to fight it out here, like to pump that jab in the face and then come with a, an uppercut from time to time. But Garcia gives him a tough target because he'll bounce to the left. he bounce back to his right. He'll plant and throw like this. He keeps him off him. And don't forget, a tremendous height advantage. Like five inches of height advantage for Corrales. Usually, I mean, I don't know. When I was a youngster, I hated to fight big, tall, skinny guys. They were always tough to beat. Well, Garcia, though, has already made Corrales come to him more. And look how he's able to land those shots because Corrales is in front of him and bending down. So the height and reach has been negated in this fight, partially by Garcia and partially by Corrales oh, himself. Oh, is there a cut over the eye? There is, in the and uh, referee... Uh, Joe Cortez is going to have the doctor, Flip Romanski, come in and take a look at this cut. That had to be a head blow. Uh, I didn't see the heads come together, but it's right there, and it's a bad cut out. Could have been a clash of heads. We'll see, and if it is, of course, uh, if it is ruled a, an accidental clash of heads, uh, we'll have to see if that's the case for Joe Cortez. Well, they have to get through four rounds. We're only in the third round. They're going to get through four and be considered a technical draw, and, of course, the champion retains his title. After four rounds, it goes to the scorecard. So uh, these are critical finishing of the third round, the last minute here, and then the fourth round to get through it. Providing that the judges agree with my scoring and that Garcia's out in front. But Garcia's going to be in trouble. Again, we mentioned that uh, Chuck Bodak is working in the corner, and now we'll find out just how good Chuck is. And he is one of the best guys in the business. He's going to have to use his talents now. And Corrales now really having a good finish here to this round, partially maybe because of the cut, whether it was caused by a head or a punch, doesn't matter. Corrales is having his way and landing everything against Garcia. This is a difficult round to score because, as Al said, he's won the second half of the round for sure. Just like the last round where Garcia did very well in the first part and didn't do so well in the second part. I think the power shots this time were definitely landed by Corrales. So uh, if my score is accurate, this is a very, very close fight after three. Here comes the bell in round number three. Now we got to go to the corner and see what happens with Roberto Garcia and Chuck Bodak for work on that cut. Well, listen in. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Tranquilo, mijo. Don't blow your nose. Su nose, go fast, okay? Yeah. Keep him up. Tell him to relax, keep your hands up. Stay in tight, this man. Here's the, uh, the clash of heads that apparently caused that cut. There's the good left hooks by Garcia. I don't see clash of heads in there. Somewhere in there, there may have been. The heads came together, Albert. A couple like times. Yeah. yeah, hard to tell. Garcia, in any case, landed some good left hooks there. It was early in the round. All right, here we go. Round number four. Bob Sheridan with Al Bernstein, MGM Grand Garden Arena. The principals, Roberto Garcia, the 32-0 champion of this uh, IBF junior lightweight uh, division. Diego Corrales, who had a pretty good third round, uh, trying to even out this fight a little bit. A cut beside the right eye of Garcia in the third round. And it uh, looks like Chuck has done a pretty good job now. Uh, the referee, Joe Cortez, working his 123rd championship fight, says, hey, keep the hands up to Garcia. I heard him say the very opening, I'm firm but fair, and he is. 
So far in this fight, what I think is intriguing is both men have landed big punches, and so both have felt the power of the other man. So far, nobody's gone down, though I think a couple of times they've been stunned. Between the two of them, they have 47 knockouts out. That's a lot of knockouts with two fighters. And uh, when uh, Casey Sipes, my uh, stage manager, he said, hey, well, I was just going to go, Colonel. I said, hey, I tell you, I think this is going to go the distance. But, you know, it's unusual when both guys can bang like this. But they're both uh, tough fighters. Well, they, they both have the ability to knock the other man out. But they also, I think, are tough enough, as you say, to go the distance. Good right hand by Corrales. And he's... Morales has shifted things around a little bit now since the midway point of that third round after the heads came together. And even though Garcia is still the aggressor here, I think he's not landing the heavier blows. Wow, with the left hand goes Roberto Garcia. Garcia right in the chest. That's where he wanted him to be. He wanted him to be right in that chest. A little bit of a low blow that time by Corrales. Corrales stays outside now, resets himself. Garcia wants to get right in his chest again. Tries to bang inside, but tied up pretty good by Corrales. This is round number four, scheduled for 12. And the blood around the right eye of Garcia could be bothering him a little bit. It did in the last round, though he's been very aggressive here. Um, we could see the point where that would be a problem. And we never did get a total ruling to where they thought that was a clash of heads or not. And I, I don't think even the uh, television replay was definitive. Yeah. I didn't see a punch that did it. And, it, it, and the way it's the gash is that it's usually heads coming together. This is round four again, a schedule for 12. It's a world title fight. And now, what an honor it is to have you working with me. This is my 630th world title fight tonight. Well, that's great. And uh, this has been a lot of fun for me, to be sure. Tia, this fight has been a lot of fun. This is a very action packed it's, fight. It's real good action. And, too, they, you know, their styles are just different enough and their size is different enough to make the fight. You, you all have heard the uh, old adage styles make fights well. This is a oh, nice left hook that time by Roberto Garcia. But again, it doesn't shift Diego Corrales. Corrales doing a lot of arm punching, and that's why some of those big shots and straight right hands are not doing more damage to Garcia, but this is really an excellent fight. All right, I got that one slightly in favor of Corrales with Garcia, the aggressor. I thought, again, Corrales, especially in the early going of this round, landed heavier blows. I've got the fight dead even after four. That's only an indication. The judges are Bill Graham from Las Vegas, Mike Liena from the state of Illinois, and Steve Weisfield from the state of New Jersey. They'll do the official scoring should it go to the scorecards. Important factor here, though, is now that it's beyond four rounds, it goes to the scorecards, Al, as opposed to a well, technical draw. If they said it was a clash that's of heads. It, that's true, which we don't know. We, we haven't oh, heard yet. You get, all you got to do is punch. Yeah. You say yes, but you don't do it. Yeah. You, you want to fight. Throw some you fight in his fight. Yeah. Okay? Don't you fight his fight. Round. Fight you our fight. Oh, yeah. Move and punch. Move and punch. Well, you heard Miguel Diaz. That is the crux of it. They wanted, as I said at the beginning, Diego Corrales to be more of a boxer puncher. He is standing in front of Garcia, and they don't want that. They want him to throw punches, but move a little. Well, it, it, exactly. And now he's up on his toes. Let's see if he gets any movement at all. This is round five, scheduled for 12, MGM Grand Garden Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada. You're watching the live coverage of the 12 round scheduled IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. You know, sometimes it's irresistible when you're facing a fighter like Garcia who can be hit and who's coming forward. Once you hit him with two or three, you want to stay there and land more. Good left hook by Garcia. And what happens is you put yourself in harm's way by doing that. Neither fighter has been down. Back in the third round, Garcia had a uh, cut by his eye, his uh, right eye. And uh, we saw the great job that uh, his corner man who is one of the very best in the business, Chuck Bodak, has done in that eye because we haven't seen a lot of blood coming down. And it was a pretty bad cut in that, had a very bad uh, part in the eyelid of the right eye. So a uh, real fine job. And the most important thing is that Garcia is not in trouble with it anymore. In the second half of that third round, he was worried about the cut. And Diego Corrales has that lump under his right eye. That swelling could be a problem because it could start to obscure his vision a little bit. It's courtesy of the left hooks that Garcia is landing. Look at this, that time he misses the left hook and right back with two punches is Diego Corrales. And, and the difference, Bob, is the fact that Corrales is giving him movement. This is the, the way his people wanted him to fight this fight, and he's making it more difficult just with a little lateral movement for Garcia to, to get off. 
Well, Jody Heaps was uh, was saying when he talked to him that his people said definitely we want angles and definitely he wasn't getting him, but he he's getting a little bit now, not great movement, but just enough to throw off uh, Roberto Garcia from just walking straight in and throwing shots. As the blood begins to trickle from that eye, he ducks underneath the wild left hand by Corrales. Corrales sees the blood and it ignites him a little bit, gets the adrenaline flow going. He thinks he may have the guy hurt. You know, while that right eye is beginning to close up with Corrales, he's wide-eyed though. Isn't he? he looks like a wild man right now. He blinking a little bit. Vision could be a problem for both of these guys, and both of them have trouble with the right eye. A little cut in the right eye of Garcia and a big, what I call a mouse, underneath the right eye of Corrales, which could be a big problem with vision in another round or two, but that left hook keeps uh, landing on top of it. Diego Corrales having himself a very good round five. He's been very, very good with his movement. He's thrown a lot of punches, which is what they want from him, and kept Roberto Garcia off balance enough so Garcia can't rush in and throw those double left hooks. Well, he's circling a little bit. It's slow. Now he shifts back, takes a step to the right. Uh, you want to stay away from the left hook of Garcia. I wouldn't suggest you circle the right too much. Closing seconds now of this the fifth round. A pretty good Corrales run. More important, Corrales is one, three, and four on my scorecard, and he may be taking five. Loading up the right hand and misses as Garcia at the bell. Put the water, put the water in here. Hey, you heard him, you heard him, Chico. All you gotta do is keep boxing, baby. You let him go. Okay? Put your hand down, put your hand down. Ten. You keep using the jab. More, more jabs. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Read it. Cabeza adentro, así como cabeza de ahorita, no te endereces, carnal, porque te pega la derecha. Le estás ganando el round, se lo volviste a ganar, pero hay que trabajar. Mira, si te tiró algo de más ganchos. Hay que trabajar adentro, adentro, adentro. Sube tu mano derecha. Y suavecito del cuerpo. All right, so we're set to go to round number six in a fight that I've got Corrales one point out in front. He came in his fatigues looking for a war, and he's found one with uh, Roberto Garcia. Garcia's got all he can handle with this guy now. He's going to turn things around. I don't have Garcia winning a round since the second. I had him winning one and two. Then gradually Corrales turning it in three, winning four and five. But very close rounds, all of them. So the judges, this is only an indication of the way I'm seeing it right now. We're in the sixth round of a scheduled 12-round world title fight here in the 130-pound division. Roberto Garcia in the burgundy trucks with his back to you. To the right of your screen in camouflage is Diego Corrales. Both of these men undefeated. Somebody's going to lose tonight, barring a draw. Corrales said before this fight that uh, he, Garcia likes guys who stand in front of him. I'm going to fight smart, stay within myself, box, and uh, make him fight my fight. That has happened in the last two rounds. After beginning fighting more on Garcia's terms. And the jab is such an important weapon. Corrales now finally using that. See, look what it does. It key, oh, good counter left hook. Caught him with a real good left hook. Backed him off that time. Almost dumped him, too. Oh, another hook, and that's hurt Garcia. Yeah, Garcia, you can see the legs, uh, you can see him a little bit wobbly, and there's another cut around that eye, too. I don't know if it's the same one open up or not, but it looks like he getting clipped right on top of that right eye, did uh, Roberto Garcia. He felt the power for the first time. Look at these shots here, and Corrales making this a definitive round. This might be the first real definitive round of the fight. Now, important for Corrales, though, he's got Garcia hurt, but he has to be very careful not to get into a brawl still with Garcia. Boy, he's got him rock. He's got him back on his heels. Corrales moving in for the shot to finish it off. The blood trickles from the eye of the champion, Roberto Garcia. Are we going to see the title change hands? Plenty of time to go. He wants to load up the shot, but you're right, Al. He comes back with a left hook that would surprise uh, Corrales. Corrales looking to land the right hand. Corrales better use the jab to set these things up, and there goes Garcia. And he's down. The count's up to two and three and four. He's on uh, clear-eyed, but his legs aren't totally there. He takes the standing aid count from referee Joe Cortez. We're in the sixth round. In comes Corrales. He'd love to finish it now. Left hook, left hook. Wow, with the right hand. He still hasn't got his legs totally back. Two good left hooks. Another left hand. He gets down with the right. He's ready to go again. A nice right hand. He's out. Down. He's ready to go again. Look at these shots. Man, Corrales, if he could just get one clean shot, this kid is ready to go. His legs are not there at all. Joe Cortez watching him very, very closely. Uppercut. He's got to throw and he does. But Cortez going to stop the fight right there. He's battling back. This is hard, Al, that he's fighting with now. Left hook catches him again. He's ready to be toppled. He 
15 seconds to go in the sixth round. Corrado's having it all his way. And down he goes again for the second time. Remember, there is no three knockdown rule. It's up to four and five and six and seven. And now eight, he's back up. He can continue all right. Joe Cortez says, you're all right. He says, okay. Here's the bell. Ending a great sixth round for Corrado. Roberto Garcia has gotten off the mat before to retain his title, but he was never hurt like he has been in this match. And Dr. Okay. Flip Homansky checks in. Okay, Mila, I'm here to protect you, okay? I, I don't want you to take unnecessary punishment. Do me a favor, do me a favor, okay? He's not taking punches, I'm going to stop this fight. Well, you heard the warning by the referee. That's an experienced referee. Watch this out now. Well, here's where Corrales landed a good counter left hook and a right hand off the side of the head of Garcia, and that affects your equilibrium, and that sent him down. All right, second the out. second knockdown, Corrales using the jab very, very well, big weapon, and their uppercut, two important punches for him, and it made all the difference as he knocked Garcia out. Garcia campaigning to fight Floyd Mayweather, who has a WBC super featherweight or junior lightweight championship, but... He better get past Diego Corrales before he thinks of a mega fight against Mayweather. Right now, he's in trouble. Oh, he gets nailed two good times, trying to count over the left arm. But his legs are not totally there. He's not totally recovered from the two knockdowns in the sixth round. Tries to load up the left hand. Corrales just needs to stay in the control. Set it up with the left hand. Oh, there's a right hand that snaps the head of uh, young uh, Garcia. Garcia, the champion, in a heap of trouble here. He gets nailed again. Joe Cortez won't let this young fighter take too much more fight. Big right hand spun the head again. Wow, that was a foot shot for the right hand. The uppercut catches him. He's wobbled again now. Look at this. He's ready to go. He comes Corrales. Nails him. Right hand. He won't recover from this. No, Joe Cortez stops it. And he should have. Big right hand knockout. Well, Diego Corrales changed the focus of this fight completely by starting to use his jab. It changed the entire flow of this fight. And it did in the champion, Roberto Garcia. It's a small thing, and maybe in the grand scheme of things, it could get lost, but nothing changed this fight as much as Corrales using the jab. And this young man, a 22-year-old from Sacramento, California, and his dad who works with him, very happy. And for Roberto Garcia, very tough. He loses his title. And he loses the first fight of his career. It came at 48 seconds of the seventh round. He never recovered from the two knockdowns in the sixth. He got nailed right away, although he tried to throw gamely a left hook. But this kid, Diego Corrales, who was the most powerful of the two punches coming in, uh, just hung in there. Garcia, we thought, won the first couple rounds closely. Then with the eye cut uh, of Garcia in the third round, Corrales began to take over midway through that round, and then I thought he won 4-5. Uh, certainly, uh, he controlled a sixth round with two knockdowns. I gave him a 10-8 round there. And then they're going to score this a TKO, but uh, Joe Cortez wanted to get right to assist. Garcia rather than count him out. Uh, it's all academic. It'll be scored as a TKO, but it's another knockout on the record of Corrales. That was a clean knockout. He could have counted to 100. Yeah, Diego Corrales, as you look at him, and we will see how this fight ended, you have to give him a lot of credit. He made a strategic error in the first couple rounds fighting Garcia's fight, then turned it all around. And here you see just that little movement to keep him out of harm's way, which he started in the last three rounds, makes it impossible for Garcia to counter him. The jab, a huge weapon. Without the jab, that straight right hand doesn't get there. And, of course, that's the final punch that tells Joe Cortez it's time to stop the fight. Look at the jab. Double, triple jab sets up the right hand. And for 22-year-old Diego Corrales, it is a huge win in the end of the title reign, at least for now, of Roberto Garcia, a young 24-year-old who held the IBF title and defended it twice, but could not get it done here against Corrales. Boy, I tell you, Al, we've seen a couple of pretty good things here tonight. The David Tua second-round knockout over the Canadian heavyweight champion Shane Sutcliffe. 
and this fight was looking like it was going to be a real war and Garcia was in control for the first couple of rounds then it could even up after four and all of a sudden in the sixth round uh, Corrales just turned things around and you know it all started after his corner said look if you gotta give us movement and when he gave movement it set everything up for him and just as they said before the fight if you get your angles you can beat this guy and he did it I, I thought he did a terrific job two nice kids too by the way yeah two very good fighters and uh, Diego Corrales with that movement also established the jab stayed enough on the outside so he wasn't lured into Roberto Garcia's fight and all that equaled the kind of performance they expected from Corrales. We still have to get the official announcement from Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it official, but uh, there's no question about it. Diego Corrales, a seventh round TKO uh, winner, it could be scored as a knockout too because the referee just didn't bother to count because he really wanted to uh, attend to the safety of uh, Roberto Garcia, who had a flush knock. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 48 seconds in round number seven. He's the winner by way of knockout and the new IBF junior lightweight champion of the world Diego Chico Corrales hey, uh, how about this guy against uh, Floyd Mayweather well I, I think Chico Corrales needs a little more seasoning before he would be able to take on Mayweather and I think even he would admit that he's a young man who like Garcia they were campaigning for a Mayweather fight and I think that took their focus away by the way I think they were looking ahead thinking of bigger matches not realizing that Roberto Garcia and I, this is an honest assessment was never a dominant champion he was a good champion so far and could have become a dominant champion but I think they were really putting the the, uh, the cart before the horse and looking for a mega match they should have been concentrating on just putting together a solid defenses and I think somewhere they may have been caught looking ahead Hey, Garcia is only 24 years old. He'll be back to fight another day, thanks to the uh, Joe Cortez jumping right in there and get this thing stopped in the tennis room when he was hurt. But Corrales, brilliant. You got to say he performed very well. He has lots of physical gifts. They, as you look at Mike Tyson, as he prepares for yet another um, comeback in the ring, and there is Orla Norris. Former cruiserweight champ who is only five pounds less than Tyson. He weighed in at 218 and Tyson 223. So Orland Norris showing you what he hopes will be the kind of hand speed that will keep Mike Tyson at bay. Big night for him. If he can get that jab going like that and double with it, he could cause uh, Tyson problems. Another big story behind the story, of course, is his dad, Orland Norris Sr., who was a pretty good uh, fighter in his own right, has had uh, cancer. He's been stricken with uh, cancer, and he's had all kinds of surgeries and uh, bone marrow uh, transplants and uh, things of that nature, and there's uh, a great deal to talk about. We will. Here's Dr. Freddy Pacheco with the fighter. At the beginning, my first question is, why didn't you jab the first two or three rounds? I was so, so nervous. I feel like I was stuck in the mud. I mean, I was stuck in the mud. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't get up any punches. I was so nervous. I was just in my corner. I could hear them, and I knew what they were telling me to do. I knew what, what they were saying. I, I understood it completely, and I couldn't go out there and, and do it. It was just like I was... What woke you up? Uh, he jarred me and at the end of the third round, and I was like, oh, okay. And what, it, just, it just, un, un, just woke me up. It was like, wait a call. Well, in the second, between the first and second, he went to the corner and said, can I knock him out now? And he said, go ahead, try. And he came out and really launched a hard, hard combat in the second round. I thought that kind of woke you up. No, because I was I was never hurt at all. Towards the end of the second round, he was left hook, and uh, I didn't know where it came from. I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't suspecting it at all. And he caught me with a clean left hook, left hook, and I was like, oh, whoa! And I really got to feel it. It woke me up. It woke me right up. At the the last few rounds, you were blinking like mad because your eyes are still blinking right now. Uh, did you think that was going to be a factor in your fight? Was it going to close on your body? Uh, I I thought about it a little, but my thing was I have Miguel Diaz here, the best coming in the world. I really shouldn't worry about anything other than doing my job. And that's what I try to do. Did you think that he had the capacity to knock out? He hit you with some no. slamming shots. No, no, I was not going to go down. I wasn't going to. I just, I, I couldn't see it. I, the one thing I saw, I've been dreaming of all my life, was to get the title, and I, I wasn't going to let it go away. I wasn't letting it go. Let me go. Let me go. Well, well, all right. yeah, let, let, let's... I'm going to take out something away from this fight. This is a referee for the world championship, Mr. Cortez. Last night, the amateur referee, the referee the fight between Cobrita Soto and Hamed was impossible to deal with a guy because the guy don't know what he's doing. Well, it's tough. The referees, they don't have no experience when on the championship fight. Joe Cortez did, as usual, do an excellent fight. So we expect that from Joe Cortez. All right. Now, 
your, your reaction to this hammering uh, um, knockdown that you've suffered, you too, that you suffered in the, in the Well, you know, I came, uh, I was very well prepared, you know, at two months in training camp. I, you know, I was ready for the fight, you know, I came prepared for two months. I was ready. He just caught me. You know, I, you know, I can't do. I can't say nothing about it. You know, he, was, he was, the eye it was the eye bothering you at all? I saw you, you I flicking. Mean, it did bother me a little bit. He, you know, he caught me. It opened up. And, you know, I, there's nothing I can do. You know, I just have to give him all the credit. He at the beginning of the fight, we heard you between the first and second round come in and say, "Do you can I knock him out now?" And he said, "I'm not. Go ahead and do it." Well, and then you, know, you went I, and, and I tried started, real hard. I started getting him pretty good. You know, I thought. I, I honestly thought I was. You know, after the first few rounds, I thought I was going to get him. But like I said, you know, this is this is the sport of boxing. He caught me and there's nothing to say I got to congratulate him and you know I wish him the best did his height pose a problem uh, it did uh, you know he uh, he boxed pretty good he can't punch it real good and that's how he that's how he beat me you know I just like I said you know there's nothing I can say you know he came out better than me today and uh, he deserves everything well I, I think both of you deserve a rematch in, in this because this may be the fight of this year this is a candidate for fight of the year so it could be would you fight him any differently if you fought him again I got to think about it uh, like I said you know I had already said it in my in my in my own uh, heart that uh, whenever I lost the fight maybe that'd be my last fight so I got to think about it with my family no, 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 not as good as you are not the last fight I'm, I'm, come on I, I'm, all, I'm all for people retiring but you're in the middle exactly but there's there's other things I really want to do you you know, so I got to think about it with my family, my kids. You know, I'll think about it. Thank you very much for a great night. Thank you.